Ladies and gentlemen, I am the official guide to the Loch Ness Monster, working under the auspices of the Inverness Town Council. It's really rather interesting the way I got the post. Of course, I've always been very interested in monsters, and my Uncle Charles, so to speak, gave his life up to them. In fact, before he actually went into the home, the doctor told me that he never had a patient with such a varied assortment of monsters. And uh, so as soon as I heard of the Loch Ness Monster, I wrote to the Inverness Town Council and explained that I'd studied under my Uncle Charles, and I thought I might get help in classifying their monster. And I also pointed out a very interesting thing. This controversy about the uh, Loch Ness Monster's wife. And now, in the, the poem of Keats, the first line of the poem, The Grecian Urn, is definitely mentioned he speaks of a still unravished bride of Quiet Ness. goes on further, and he says, Sylvan historian who can best express, and of course, he's actually not named the paper on that, should be the best daily mail, but that's no doubt poetic life. And uh, the internet comes out to a very impressed upon that said, and as luck would have it, the gentleman who had the post of the official guide for me, was at that time, it was all rather scared of him, because he was making the footprints of the monster on the shore, one morning, opposite a hotel, and he was using a crushing instrument, and unfortunately he missed the shawl together and struck his foot. And the description of the monster was so vivid and comprehensive that the minister of the local kirk overheard him from the hotel and called him that that was missed from the job's vacant, and I thought it was rather interesting. Of course, it is the duty of an official guide to stimulate the interest of the visitors. And so, two or three times a week, I'd go down to shore in front of one of the hotels that wasn't doing so well, take a telescope with me, and look out at the centre of the lock, and wait until the crowd had collected, and then say, ah, oh, so the monster has two heads, and go back to the hotel. And then, of course, from the visitors that came to the other hotel, to that hotel, I drew commission, you see, and that was equally divided between the monster, the exact high council, and themselves, rather heavens of the region. I had one rather significant situation. There was a lady in the hotel called Miss Grubbers. The rest of the guests called her the Loch Ness Spinster. She was very interested in the monster and kept on asking most ridiculous questions about it. And one day she said to me in the lounge of the hotel, are you interested in the spirits? And I said, I said, yes, I am. And so she said, well, if you come up to my room, I've got a bottle. And so if you'll excuse me a minute, I'll tell you what happened when I got up to my room. When I got up to her room, I sat down, and the first thing she asked me was, do you know anything about ancient Greek history? I said, that's a peculiar thing to ask him. I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do, Miss Grubbers. So she said, well, if you remember, in ancient Greece, when a monster attacked a city, they took a maiden and tied her to a post outside the city, and the monster carried her off. So I could see which way the conversation was drifting. And so I said, oh, Miss Grubbers, yes, I guess it is in ancient Greece, and it's really rather dangerous. I mean, anything really might happen. She said, yes, that's just it. And so then she said, well, would you consider taking me down to the shores of the loch and tying me to a post and capturing the monster that way? And so I said, if you're really bent on it, it's brother, so I will, because I've heard she'd been captured by savages twice and still pretty much the same. So that evening at six o'clock, she turned up to the shores of the loch and I tied her to a post. After a little time, there was a swirl in the water and the monster came to the surface and took one look at her, dived back into the loch and he wasn't seen up that end for some time. After this, that I actually got in communication with the monster. It was very really interesting. I was walking along the shores of the loch late one evening, and I heard a noise coming from the centre of the loch. Sort of pa, 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 pa. Because I'd been in the scouts, and I was highly trained in Morse. And I immediately recognised the Morse code and translated the message. And it was Monster calling the British Isles, Monster calling the British Isles. So I wrapped out a message in reply, pa, 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 pa. I said, I'm waiting here, what shall I do? And there was a swirl in the water, and the monster came to the surface. And he looked at me and started talking to us very quickly. And he translated the message in one moment. He was very pleased and happy in the loch. Unfortunately, the best exception to this had not been an accident. He said, I'm very annoyed about the whole thing. I think it's very unfair to be the town council. My wife's taken up a very nasty attitude about it. And I may tell him that if this happens again, I'm going straight off the Barton Creek. I assured him it wouldn't happen again, and he was more or less a peaceful after that. And he said, I said to him, well, now, how is it that they used to speak more so fluently? He explained to me that they used to live in the bottom of the Atlantic, 
and in the retrieving, and there wasn't very much to do, he listened to the Atlantic Cable. That was that way, and he said, that's why I speak most of the American accent. I said, well, you still live in the Atlantic? And he said, well, no, the Atlantic. And my wife said, oh, it's not what it should be. She got herself in trouble. And they moved into the Mediterranean. But she was so upset with the luxury cruises, which she said she could never come to the surface without blushing, that they heard Loch Ness was vacant and moved up there. And he said he has three children. They are at a finishing school in the Gulf of Mexico, and they won't be coming up until next spring. And there's one thing he told me, he said he was very distressed to find so few people there to believe in him. And he said, when you go to London, I wonder if you'll ask their daughters if they really believe in him. And I would. And I'm going to ask you now, do you really believe in the Loch Ness Monster? And if you do, please lift your hands, your right hands above your head. Now, do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? One, two, three, four, five. Let's make it around half dozen. Six, a little higher, please. Six, yes. I take them now. Go straight home.